Uh, welcome back. Uh, this is the second part of the first video, uh, first uh, module. Uh, we finished uh, in report in the last uh, uh, video. Now let us go to the next slide. Here now we'll go through project selection and its models. Project selection is a process to assess each, pro each project idea and select the project with the highest priority. So uh, uh, first of all, we assess each project idea. So it is assumed that we already have more than one project idea. And then we select the project idea which has highest priority. Uh, models of project selection, then uh, there are uh, these models of uh, project selection. If there are three types numeric model non numeric model and constraint optimization model numeric model we have uh, 10 models then non numeric model we have six models and constraint optimization model we have five models so 10 plus 6 16 plus 5 21 models all together we will uh, discuss uh, first of all let's go for uh, numeric models in numeric model we'll go for payback period first of all and in payback period what is payback period payback period is a capital budgeting technique uh, which refers to the time period in which the project will be able to recover its initial investments to the future cash inflows uh, in case of uh, even cash flows uh, you can directly find out payback period now let us understand what payback period is for example your initial investment in the project is thousand rupees and uh, you're getting uh, uh, 500 rupees per year then in two years you will be able to uh, make out all your initial investment and uh, that, that is your payback period and in case of uneven cash flows again uh, the time period in which the initial investment is uh, or you will get back so for example you're invest you've invested thousand rupees and in first year you're getting thousand rupees uh, hundred rupees then second year 500 then 300 then uh, 200 so the time period when you are able to recover the thousand rupees that will be your uh, payback period payback period is a non discounting technique means we are not using uh, net present value method over here no we are not using uh, time um, uh, uh, time value of money over here and uh, 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 as far as payback period is concerned and decision making is concerned the project which has quick recovery means the shortest payback period will be considered so uh, in case of mutually exclusive project means only when there is only one project then whatever management has decided maximum desired payback period if the project uh, is having less than that the uh, payback period then it is accepted and if there are mo uh, more than one pro uh, projects then uh, the project having uh, 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 shortest payback period will be accepted so this is about the payback period now discounted payback period it is again uh, payback period is a uh, discounted payback period is a capital budget technique which refers to the time period in which the project will uh, be able to recover its invest initial investments through the discounted future cash inflows so uh, this is uh, through discount cash inflows so here we are considering uh, a time value of money so uh, this is discounting technique and uh, what we do is uh, uh, we discount all the future cash inflows uh, and uh, bring them to the present level then we uh, uh, try to calculate in how many years we'll be able to recover back uh, the initial investment and that is our discounted payback period and accord uh, same as payback period the project with which is having quick recovery of money will be uh, quick recovery of initial investment will be selected so discounted payback period is very similar to payback period the only difference being in the discounted payback period we are discounting future cash inflows in payback period we are not discounting future cash inflows so uh, this is uh, a time value of money based uh, method and uh, payback period is a, not a time value based uh, method of uh, 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 capital budgeting now annual rate of return very easy it is like a yearly rate of return is calculated by taking the amount of money gained or lost at the end of the year and dividing it by initial investment at the beginning of the year uh, what you do is for example for, for example you've got uh, net profit after tax for the next five years you make average of that so you find out average uh, net profit and then you divide it by initial investment and into 100 percent so uh, you get annual rate of return or this is also known as annual rate of return average rate of return accounting rate of return and uh, the selection criteria is the project having ARR is selected so 
this is there then next one is post payback profitability method so uh, in this method the profitability of the project after payback period is considered for decision making for example there's a project which is uh, making which is uh, which has initial investment of 1000 rupees and uh, uh, it is uh, uh, the future cash inflows will be 500 rupees uh, per year and uh, uh, the life of the project is for three years so total 1500 rupees it is making and uh, 1000 rupees is the initial investment 1500 minus 1000 is 500 that is profitability of the project and if we divide 500 with initial investment uh, by initial investment that is 1000 rupees that is 50 percent is the post payback profitability so post payback profitability it is uh, um, uh, when we uh, go into decision making the project with the highest profitability selected it is Calculator simply as post payback profit divided by initial investment into 100%. So this is the present value method. Net present value is a discounting technique of capital budgeting, which refers to the difference between present value of cash inflow and present value of cash outflow. So net present value is the difference between present value of cash inflow and present value of cash outflow. What we do is uh, we uh, discount all cash, uh, uh, future cash inflows uh, to the present level and then uh, we discount the future cash outflows as well and initial investment as well to the present level and then we just subtract cash inflows uh, um, uh, cash outflows from the cash inflows and that's how we get the NPV for mutually exclusive project that uh, that means uh, if there's only one project then NPV with positive project uh, uh, pro uh, project with positive NPV is selected and in case of two or more projects project with highest NPV is selected so uh, NPV should be more than uh, zero that is very important should be positive and uh, if there are more than one projects then a project with the highest NPV is selected and then uh, let us go for uh, internal rate of return method it is a discounting technique of project budgeting it refers to the rate of discounting at which the present value of the cash inflow is equal to the present value of cash outflow so IRR is R at which the present value of cash inflow is equal to present value of cash outflow means NPV is zero so uh, the rate of return at which NPV is zero is IRR and what is the decision matrix uh, uh, if cost of capital is more than IRR then we reject the proposal uh, if cost of capital is less than IRR then we accept the proposal and higher the IRR better it is so uh, uh, we always select a project with a better internal rate of return so uh, uh, we'll discuss all these methods quantitative methods uh, while uh, also um, doing numericals so um, I'll just uh, go through the basics of these ma methods that is very important when we'll be dealing with numericals we'll deal with uh, these things in more practical and in more detailed sense then uh, let's go for profitability index method it is very similar to uh, present value method NPV and um, uh, in NPV if you remember we used to do uh, present value of cash inflow minus present value of cash outflow in uh, profitability index what we are doing is present value of future cash inflows divided by future va present value of cash outflows so it is just a division and uh, profitability index uh, is a discounting technique because it is taking time value of money into consideration and uh, for mutually exclusive project if a pro uh, um, profitability index is anything more than one it should be selected in for two or more projects project with highest uh, profitability in profitability index should be selected and it is also known as benefit to cost ratio uh, actually in profitability index what we are doing is present value of uh, future cash inflows divided by present value of future cash outflows and, um, and what we are actually doing is benefit divided by cost that is why it is known as benefit to cost ratio then opportunity cost model opportunity cost is the benefit you forego in choosing one course of action over the another you can determine the opportunity cost choosing one investment option over another by using one formula so uh, return on the most profitable investment choice uh, minus return on the investment chosen to pursue so whenever you choose any project you always forego another projects because you have project alternatives so uh, what happens is uh, you always forego a project you always is lose an opportunity because you have to select one so whatever uh, whenever you want to find out what is the opportunity cost you have to find out the return on the most profitable investment choice minus return on the investment chosen to pursue or opportunity cost what one sacrifice divided by one gain uh, uh, so uh, uh, simply uh, uh, basically 
HOT cost means the cost uh, which a person uh, foregoes while choosing one project over another and um, that is what it is let us go for a scoring model scoring models may be more flexible uh, rather than focusing purely on financial scoring models let you determine which qualities of project are more important to you your team and your company at large you may for example choose to look at profitability overall risks support from stakeholders and difficulty of the project once the criteria are chosen you will uh, want to weight them according to your priorities and rank each project in terms of these four measures using a consistent scale the total number of the project are then combined and used to reflect the project's total value, making it easy to compare your project with an, an, uh, to one another. Uh, actually, it is uh, uh, simply a risk scoring model. You uh, 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 rate the different projects on the basis of various risks you are going to face, and on the basis of the score obtained. Uh, you um, choose the option which has least risk as compared to other options uh, let us go for another option that is uh, another method that is economic value added model we have already discussed it is economic value added is the measure of company's financial performance based on residual wealth come calculated by deducting its cost of capital from its operating profit adjusted for taxes on cash basis so it has no part net operating profit after tax net operating profit how it is calculated it is ebit minus taxes so net operating profit ebit minus taxes uh, uh, minus capital invested into capital invested into weighted average cost of capital so this is overall cost of capital and so uh, what we do is no part minus overall cost of capital is economic value added uh, so this is how we calculate and the come uh, how what is the decision how is the decision criteria uh, the uh, project with the highest economic value added we select the project uh, uh, on the basis of how much economic value addition it is doing so uh, the project with highest value addition economic value addition will be selected <clears throat> Let us go for non-numeric models. Uh, there are six non-numeric models. Secret cow method. Superior decides the, the project and the team executes it. So uh, boss is always right. Whatever boss says, uh, they treat it as sacred cow and they just go for the project and uh, the team executes it. Operating necessity models. Some of the projects are very important for the operating necessity as operating necessity for the firm. Uh, without them, they cannot operate. And for example, uh, if uh, a firm is lying in an uh, earthquake, quick prone uh, 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 geographical situ uh, 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 situation geographical place then um, uh, what they can do is uh, they can take certain projects to minimize the risk caused due to earthquake and uh, that is where operating necessity uh, that is the operating necessity of the firm and uh, that is how operating necessity model works comparative necessity model uh, the project is essentially to survive the competition faced by the firm you're taking a project only because your competitor is taking and if you don't take it then you will be lagging behind in the competition product line extension model uh, the project is essential to extend the existing line product line of the firm so what you're doing actually is uh, you've already been working on the pro uh, uh, some product lines for quite a period of time and now you want to go ahead with the ex uh, extending your existing product line then you can go for this model comparative benefit model the project is selected because the project is comparatively more beneficial than other projects q sort model it is very easy what you do is according to the relative merits of project are first divided into three groups good fair and poor then the main group is further subdivided into two types fair minus and fair plus if any group uh, has uh, the uh, more than eight members Members. and then uh, on the basis of uh, these rankings on the then they're ranked from best to worst and then uh, uh, the um, uh, model the project having uh, uh, belonging to the good category and the fair plus category is uh, selected so uh, it is basically a ranking model now constraint optimization model uh, there are five types of constraint optimization model in this we are uh, why it is called as constraint optimization model because uh, we are constraining some resources which are available for the project management now if uh, let's go and uh, look into these models first one is linear programming model this programming model and method involves bringing down the cost of the project through reduction of the time required to complete it so according to this model there is only one variable which decides on the cost of the 
project and that is time required to complete it so you try to reduce the time required to complete it you try to finish a project within minimum possible time and that is how you reduce the cost of project now nonlinear models the nonlinear programming aims at solving optimization problems in some where in some of the constraints of functions are nonlinear so uh, there may be more than one functions now you're considering more than one variable and you're trying to manage those variables uh, to reduce the cost of your project now integer uh, integer programming this method focuses on integer value rather than fractional values some products like table for example can never be fractional uh, so you always uh, consider integers uh, you uh, ignore fractionals and that is how you do so so you do it in uh, rounded figures and dynamic programming this involves simplifying a complex problem by separating it into a number of simpler problems so what we do is we divide a complex problem into uh, many uh, uh, smaller problems and then we try to solve these problems according to this model then multiple objective programming the multiple objective programming approach focuses on making a decision for a number of problems using mathematical op optimization so what we are doing is we are taking multiple uh, objectives and then according we make a mathematical uh, model uh, and uh, we place the figures and we find out which a project is uh, least uh, at least at cost uh, and more on benefit and then we select on the basis of this uh, thank you i hope you enjoy the first unit uh, now we'll uh, uh, see you soon uh, i just go through these videos thank you